Brecker sound. That is the sound of the propeller as the tips of the blades go supersonic. That deep, throaty rumble, rumble that followed is the engine. The engine is a Pratt and Whitney R1340 radial engine. Now, radial means that the cylinders are arranged in a circle around the crankshaft. 1340 for you motorheads. 1,340 cubic inches, generating 600 horsepower in an airplane that weighs in at 5,300 pounds. ESNJ2. Let's listen. to fly in one of these, you most certainly should. As I stated before, it's not just an aircraft flight, it is a step back in time. Entering from show right, the show begins with what likely was their first aerobatic maneuver, a classic loop. The loop is big and round and was first demonstrated in 1913 and was originally referred to as a loop-de-loop. -loop. From the right, he's got the throttle all the way up. 600 horsepower, all pulling in the right direction. Here he comes, he's going to lower the nose, build up a little bit of extra speed, and then he's going to pull back and do the loop. Here we go, watch the Thomas is going to bring this around. Smoke is on again. He's going to dive down and get a little bit of airspeed. Keep your eyes on him, ladies and gentlemen. As he comes around, listen to that propeller singing. Oh, you're Cooper, right? How you doing, buddy? He's going to pull up right there. Push the stick over into his knee. Notice the smoke trail and trajectory of the SNJ. It is easy to see why this type of roll is often called a ballistic roll with a unique corkscrew shape. The loop and roll are still taught today to teach private pilots precise aircraft control. These two maneuvers serve as the building blocks for military flying and recreational aerobatics. This next maneuver is named after World War I German fighter ace Max Himmelman. He was the first to blend a roll and a loop together. The Himmelman is a combination of half loop and half of the roll and was invented to quickly reposition a fighter pilot to a high advantageous position, a position where he could dive back in. This very SMJ, former Navy training aircraft, was utilized to teach this maneuver to our Navy and Marine Corps pilots in the early 1940s in Norfolk, Virginia. There is the Emil Man. Chris's next maneuver was invented by accident and evolved into a training maneuver in the 1930s. A U.S. pilot named Len Povey was serving in the Cuban Air Force. 
Legend has it that in 1936, Len was performing an aerobatic display and botched a loop. He elected to roll safely upright. Then he repeated this and ended drawing a figure eight in the sky. What's on the ground? Kofi was asked what maneuver that was called. He downplayed his mistake, nonchalantly just said a Cuban eight, and a new maneuver was born. Importantly, the maneuver gained significance by quickly being incorporated into the military pilot training and is still taught worldwide today. Run with the right up high and heading in at the speed of fun, Chris Thomas, the SNJ-2. He's going to go up, complete five-eighths of the loop. Look at this, he's doing a reverse Cuban eight. Okay. I'm starting the announcer today, all right. Well, you know, pilots like to do that sometimes. And to be honest, I don't want to. There we go, there's half the Cuban eight. Notice the roll out. He's got his air speed up. Here comes the pull. And away he goes. Most military pilots of the greatest generation received their advanced training in the Texas. The United States phased it out by the mid-1950s, but its service continued outside of the U.S. The Texan flew for at least 63 nations worldwide and often in a combat role. The Texan remained in service for the South African Air Force until 1995, an incredible 60 years of military service. In total, there were over 15,000 SNJ and AT-6 Texans produced. The variant flying before you today is an SNJ-2 model, one of only 61 produced. on their routine. It actually looks like it's improvised, but it isn't. It is well practiced and well rehearsed and is part of the schedule. The fun part is not telling the announcer. See, that's where he gets the last lap. He gets to do the maneuver and checking to see if I'm watching him or not. Coming in from the right, here's Chris Thomas once again. One of only 13 of this model, the Dash 2 SNJ. And here he comes. Smoke on. Let's keep an eye on what he's going to do. The four point hesitation, roll stopping precisely every 90 degrees. How do we know it's precisely every 90 degrees? Because we've measured them. Unbeknownst to you, there's a guy out there on the wing of the protractor measuring the degrees as he rolls the earth. And if you buy that, I've got some oceanfront property down in Arizona for you. And maybe a bridge or two in New York. Apparently he's having himself some fun up there. I just heard him call the air boss, and I think he's got another maneuver in mind. But I'm not going to tip you off just yet. But he's going to bring the airplane back in here, and Chris Thomas is going to do something rather cool. Smoke is on. That's telling me he's definitely inbound for another maneuver. So keep your eyes on Chris Thomas here. 
Oh, he's got the runway lined up. The speed is up. The engines are full tilt. Boogie. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Keep an eye on Chris. Going up and up and up. Right about here he is. Weightless in the airplane. Oh, here comes the fun part. The G-forces are going to push him into the seat. He's going to need another one. He did one loop. What's this going to turn out to be? Look at that. We're right on track for a double loop. Oh, so easy. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Thomas, the double loop. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I think he's having a lot of fun with that airplane. You know, if you looked at it earlier, you saw that it has a glass canopy on it. On a day like today, I would bet you dollars to donuts that is at least 120 degrees in the cockpit of that airplane right now. Even with all of the air blowing through the cockpit, through the vents and everything, it still gets a little toasty because of that big plexiglass greenhouse on the top of the airplane. Smoke is on again. I have no idea what he's going to do. I'm going to see it just as, just as you are. But he's definitely got the throttle up. All right, Chris. Razzle dazzle us, buddy. Here we go. only got so much gas on board the airplane here. And in that, if he doesn't run out of gas, he may run out of smoke oil. All right, Chris is going to bring it back around again. Maybe he'll do a photo pass on this opportunity. Up, oh, smoke is on. No photo pass this time. He's got something planned, though. Sounds so good diving in at the runway, doesn't it? All right, Chris, hit us with your best shot, buddy. Thomas is going to be back. 
All right, folks, we have a special honor here today. Tack Arrow has been gracious enough to host the raffle today. So go ahead and pull out those raffle tickets. I got the winning number right here. It's 17171. Do we have a winner out there in the audience? That's 17171. Where is the winner of our raffle? Where are you? Wave your hand if you happen to be the winner. That ticket was 17171. Where is he? I know we got we got a winner. Okay. Oh, there he is. I got him. All right. This gentleman has won himself a sightseeing ride around the airport here during the air show. We're going to get him in the airplane. He's going to go for a sightseeing ride as Chris Thomas lands. All right. There he is. Here's our lucky winner. Wave to the crowd there, buddy. You're the lucky guy who got to go and win a sightseeing ride here at Leesburg Executive Airport during our air show. Thank you so much. Chris Thomas back into position while our lucky raffle winner gets in the airplane and goes for a short time.